okay, so using this in your classroom, how are you going to do things different? Or are you going to do things different? Well, this brings up a lot of questions. We use, <coughs> for writing music, we use a thing called MuseScore, mm -hmm. which is a free download from the internet. It's basically like a Google Doc for music that you can start a tune, upload it, and then other people can work on it and share it over, well, a lot of people take modern tunes that are out there right now and do their own version of them and post them. Obviously, being a composer, I mean, they're taking music that I would have written and posting it, and I'm not getting anything from it. So I tell the kids, you know, <laughs> it's a gray area. They, they've done their own arrangement of someone else's music, but they're not attributing anything to the original composers. Like the kids like to play the most modern song there is out there on their instrument, so they'll write it out by ear and then post it up there. Right. I think that there's a little bit of a gray area there, too. Um, I know that you're allowed approximately 30 seconds, usually, um, of a song, and I'm not sure um, how if they're using that and, and if there's any exceptions for music for education or not. So that would be something you would maybe want to be checking into and I'll write it down and see if I can find anything different. But well, it's not commercially. I mean, they're not making money from it. So I don't know, right. but neither is the compo original composer. So <laughs> Right. Well, they're not making money from it. And for educational purposes, um, educational fair use gets a little bit of a wiggle room than from people that are like commercially using it. So for example, with Dawn or Robin or you know, somebody that was doing it as a commercial product, like you said, even if they're not making money from it, if they are working in a business environment, they have a little bit stricter rules in education for a lot of the areas because education gets a fair use um, kind of exemption on some of the areas. It makes it a little bit more gray. So with them having it in a closed environment, not sharing it outside of that environment, you know, things like that, you can probably get away with it, especially since they're arranging it, transcribing it by ear, that kind of thing. But if they were to play it in a concert, then that might be murky water um, from my understanding of it. But like I said, I will have to look into that. Remember um, a couple summers ago when flash mobs were all the rage? Mm -hmm. I, I worked at the Marriott headquarters in internal audit at that time. Oh and one of the Marriott's in Europe somewhere uh, did a flash mob and posted it on YouTube and their Facebook page, one of the hotels. And it was for a couple and for their honeymoon. And it was very adorable and cute and it got a lot of praise. But then, not to be outdone, and there are 3,500 Marriott's, um, other properties started doing flash mobs with like uh, Katy Perry songs and and big productions that just trying to outdo each hotel and all went on YouTube. We had to very quietly put the kibosh on all of that because they were playing the entire song and then not crediting the song, the artist and the writer at the end of the flash mob. So almost got uh, the entire company in big trouble. Um, it doesn't even matter if you've credited them. If they don't want you using it, they can go after you for it. So yeah. big trouble for Marriott. Oh, I can't. I can't even imagine. That would be a headache. Anyone else have any comments about using it within their classroom or ways that you can see it changing? Anything like that? It's okay if you're not. I just and Greg, if you're talking, you're muted. I was not talking. <laughs> okay, way to put you on the spot then, huh? This is a teacher call on the back of the classroom. Um, you just came up in my screen, I was making sure. Oh, yeah. Um, so after that then, we're working with Padlet this week. How many of you have seen Padlet before this class? Yay, nay, Padlet? Nope, I've never used it. No, I haven't seen it. Never. Okay. 
So I like Padlet because it's really simple. And you can post like I did for our initial one. You can post it, make the students have an account or not have an account, and they can throw resources together really easily. Um, I do like free resources. So there's very few things in this class that I will make you pay for um, because I know what it's like to operate on a high school budget at an underserved <laughs> school, um, which is nothing <laughs> a lot of the time. Um, so with the Padlet, it's really easy to post resources, share resources, and because they're linked, um, a lot of times it takes a lot of the headache of attribution out of there because you're embedding the resource, like I said with YouTube before, you're embedding the resource, and so you're not you know, downloading and uploading on your own site, you're simply linking to it. Um, I've been told by someone else that people can be touchy and not want to be linked to other resources, but they'll typically say that on their, on their blog or on their post or whatever that they don't want anything connected to it. The other thing you have to worry about is if you um, have something linked to it that is um, like a PDF download when you go to the website and it's behind a firewall, sometimes it'll show up when they shouldn't without people being able to log in. You can make your, your Padlet's password protected though and that gives you a little bit of um, anonymity. And you can also work it as a classroom assignment and assign students the names, at least you could in the summer, or in the fall, I'm sorry. Um, so that some, sometimes helps too if you have student one, student two, or you know, assign them a, a code number so they don't have their name on there if they're younger as well. Um, there's a lot of other resources that are like this out there. There's, um, it used to be Wallwisher. There's another one that's um, like Trello is a little bit similar. Um, tip of my tongue, had to use it the other day. I'll think of it in a little while here. There's another one that works very much the same way as well where it allows you to put the sticky notes on it. Um, so as you're searching for it, if this one doesn't meet your needs, you can probably find another resource that you could use easily to display the resources. What would be a benefit of using this? What are some of the affordances? I could really share this with my other tech teachers in the other schools mm -hmm. and use it down the road. You know, in a couple of years, if I needed to find resources, I can always use that and mm -hmm. follow up on it. Yep. So Dawn says it's a visual medium. Mike says it's easy to share. And the other things that you can think about. I think it's really easy to use. I mean, I, I just got on it today. It took five seconds to learn. Yeah. yeah. I'll let you know as soon as I work with it a bit more. So. <laughs> okay. Well, that's fine. I mean, this is the beginning of the week. I like to hit you on the beginning of the week with your um, the little meeting like this for the simple reason that um, if you are having trouble, waiting till Friday night or Saturday morning doesn't do you any good. Um, right. so, and I know a lot of people are, you know, you work during the week and then the weekend you do your stuff and turn it in Sunday night. So this gives you a little bit of a preview. And like I said to everybody before, you're required to go one out of three. I'll always post them so you'll have the access to them. Um, you don't have to go to any more. Like the, those of you that are here tonight, you do not have to attend anymore, but you're welcome to attend them. Um, and everyone's going to be set up like this, talk a little bit about the stuff you read, talk a little bit about the technology, answer any questions, and see what we can do. So if you're finding the Padlet pretty easy, the only thing that's a little tricky every now and then is embedding it. Um, depending on the product you chose for your blog and any miraculous updates that they give you right before you, you know, usually I post a how-to video and they update the next day. Um, but playing around with it, there's an embed code within the Padlet that you can use to put into your blog post that puts it like I did within the class. Um, some of them also use just the link to connect it. When in doubt, you can always just embed a hot link that people can click on. It's not as pretty. But I had somebody do, um, they used a product that I wasn't, maybe, I don't remember what product they used about two semesters ago that did not want to embed the Padlet. As long as you have a link that people can get to your Padlet, I am fine with that. So if you run into difficulty embedding it, um, help desk is really, is like the help support on the, the tools are pretty good. YouTube is usually pretty good at finding some resources to help you out and you can always email me with that. Okay, so I am really looking forward to seeing your lesson plans. Do any of you have any questions?
Uh, just about the uh, link to the blog pages. Yeah, I'm going to be posting those. Okay. Um, everybody put them into the discussion board. I will make a consolidated list so you have them. And here's the reason why I do this. In two years, World Campus clears your shell. So you will no longer have um, access to the stuff that you put into this class. You will personally have your stuff kept, I'm sure. But like, I won't have access to Don's assignment or to Richard's assignment or Robert's assignment. And in two years, I might be, you know, maybe I don't want to use Padlet, but I'm like, I remember I read Robin's blog post and there was really a fantastic resource on her Padlet wall. So instead of trying to track it down that way, you can, you'll have access to those if you haven't, if they haven't been deactivated. So that way it gives you this community of people to build upon. And it also gives you access to a lot of really, really excellent ideas, whether they're actually in your um, work setting at the moment or not that you can adapt to work with or share with other people. So that's why I have you do the blog posts, even though some people don't enjoy that very much. <laughs> yeah. Any other questions that you happen to have? Okay. Well, if that's the case, you can stick around and talk for a few more minutes. If you have any questions you want to ask me personally, you can kind of wait out the other people or, um, thank you, Adam. That's awesome. I'm opening it up right now and I will read over that. I appreciate that. Um, Adam posted in the chat, if you didn't see that, a little section about copyright and VHS to DVD and digital. So how to do the preservation that way. Thank you. That should definitely go on my Padlet wall for your bonus points. So Adam has dibs on that one. There you go. <laughs> Not that people usually need bonus points, but you know, um, it's always nice to have them. All right then, I will stick around for a little while in case anybody has any questions that they need to ask me that's outside the, the kind of group chat idea. And it, if you want to email me and set up a time to talk, we can always do it this way on the phone. Um, I'm good at getting back to your email, anything like that. So otherwise, have a great night. Keep warm. Thanks. Take care, Jeff. Bye, Cheers. guys. Have a good night, guys. Have a good night. <laughs>